when we met the last time, we were looking at information management. And what we're looking at, we look at this, what is information management. You are supposed to find two definitions online and then construct your own definition of information management in your book. <clears throat> we look at the steps in information management that we have to plan for information management before we start collecting any data, we have to look at the resources in place, safety, security, accessibility, um, procedural policies that governs us to collect information. And then we have to look at our data collection sources, where are we going to get data from? We look at the methods, how are we going to collect the data? We look at the trials, how do we test the data coming in is correct? And we look at monitoring data collection so that while we are collecting data, no errors can be introduced into the process that will affect us in the data analysis. We look at data preservation. How do we keep, how do we maintain what data we have collected to be used in an organization? And we look at how the data is being used. How are we going to make the best of the data to make decisions? And then we look at disseminating it to the public distribution to the various parties. And you are supposed to find a scenario and document what is provided at each of the stage in data collection. The example I used to you was the one with your six month application process. So you're going to find one situation and document what occurred at each stage of the data of the information management cycle. We also started looking at why is it important to have information management? If we have good information management, there is consistency in data recording. For example, safety. We are using the same system as all the schools to collect data. So the data must be recorded consistently. So it is last name, in last name field, middle name, first name, the date of birth, the day, month, year, gender, and CXE have a consistent data collection coming in so that there is no error in their data collection system. CXE has procedures in place in their information management to protect against any possibility of errors in their system. So for example, when your teachers enter you into the ORS for CXE, the online registration system, you have to print out the system record for you and I say to you, verify that your name is spelled correctly, your date of birth, your gender, your subjects are correct, the correct unit, the correct proficiency, if it's a CSEC subject, everything must be properly recorded. And you sign to it that you use corrected. So once you sign the school says corrected, and you, the school forward the data to the CXC database at the head office, CXC is no longer responsible to check your name spelling. Because your local school is responsible for your own data collection and training. So if the error is there with your name spelled wrong, that should have been corrected from your school side and not from CXC side. But when they when the child never come back and your name spelled wrong on it, they say, but my name is spelled wrong. And the school said, but you said it was correct. Then it is you have to pay the, the correction fee because you are the one who introduced error in the information management process. It means that it helps us to ensure the effective functioning of the organization. CXC is a multinational organization that is part of 18 Caribbean territories. It is not just Jamaica. So even though Jamaica is the highest number of entries in any CXC exam by far, Jamaica alone has the highest number of entries in any exam. So like, for example, digital media there are 1,100 candidates in the Caribbean, and at least 70% of that 1,100 candidates are from Jamaica. So by far, we are the highest number of persons. But then, CXC needs to function effectively. So we need to know how many individuals, how many persons they got for invigilator, how many people have to print for mathematics exam, how they're going to package the exam. So if your school has 236 people doing mathematics, they package it in four packs of 50. 
one pack of 30 and a pack of 10. So you only have four extra paper that comes for CXC. So they don't print and send you three, five packs of, of 50. That's 14 paper you don't need. They only give you like four papers extra in each school because the cost to print each exam booklet is there. So it means that CXC have to look at how do they function effectively as an organization when exam results come back from Barbados from August 5th. The Ministry of Education will get the results first. So they can start a data analysis. CXC make it available to universities so they can start pre-selection of students and contracting if they got accepted to the university. But you don't get your preliminary slip until almost the end of August. But the slips were printed. By the time they get to you, by the time they get to you, it might be too late for you to do something. You're applying for six format stats, you want the proof of your preliminary results. So your school will accept the printout from the online system until the real one comes. The real preliminary slips will come. It means that functioning effectively as an organization, we have to have the right information to make managerial decisions. It assists, it assists in the timely decision making of managers. So the Minister of Education, the Honorable Senator Royal Reed, have to come and present in the press and the media. He needs to present statistics. He needs to present findings. He needs to say what percent increases there in math compared to last year. How did boys perform different from girls? And if there's a problem, what steps will the ministry use to improve these decline in the performance of students in various subjects? But they have to make timely decisions. They have to find resources in place. To go and train math teachers in whatever they are not performing well in math. It means that we have to take information management because we have to use it to make timely decisions. So right now your students have a lot of problems with class assignment. But there are not empty rooms in your school not being utilized. But rooms are controlled by departments. But departments don't make them up the habit to know that rooms are available. So walking around the campus waiting to find a room is a part of bad information management. Because as an administrator, I want to know what are all the rooms in the school. When I give you a timetable, you will start the class in the rooms you want to use as a vice principal. Then you tell me which rooms are free. So if our class is kept in somewhere, I must can find a room based on the schedule. There are a lot of empty rooms here in this school that is not being used. And in other words, they can't find class, or they can't find class, or they can't find this. It's because there is a bad information management taking place. Copy the double book room. So it means that managers will make time decisions if they have the right information. If they don't have the right information, then they cannot make decisions to the benefit of the organization. It means that there is also increased understanding of a situation in which a decision needs to be made. So a while ago, running up and down to Mr. Costa and Arthur Cad and getting some attitude from people and something there, I said, let's go to the principal. I thought from my going to the top of the organization. Let's go to the principal. She now start making phone calls. To find a room for where we can go. Reading room, AV room, this, that, that. It's a miss, let's find me a room. <laughs> it means that people are now becoming aware of what the situation is because they have to understand in their head if student of a class, if person of a class in my class, it's not my problem. It's a school problem that they solve with their administrators, not me. I'm an external person. I tell the school two weeks ago when I am free. I said, here are my times when I am free. 
when you're creating your six form table, you create a timetable based on when I am free. If you are cashing your timetable, that's not my problem. At the end of the day, the lesson will be taught. Whether people are here, yes or no, not my problem. But what I need to make sure, I'm in an environment in which I can record. I can do a sound recording or a video recording on the screen. And that the student can access this outside of class if they miss a class as I have. So I have now made my situation clear. It can't be a room with people walking and making noise on the outside, a regular classroom. It must be a room that is sealed and has very good acoustics inside. And we don't hear the parents too much or the kids make a pure noise, which will distort the quality of the we record it. It means that we have to make an understanding of the situation in which in other words, people don't have to go in over and overdrive. They need conference rooms. Room that can kind of seat people who need to have a, a class without laptops or anything. A conference room. Everything I want to do is already online. All the assignments, all the notes, the PowerPoint, everything is online. So when the love of internet is not my problem. I must be able to cause come in on one class, plug in our projection system and start my class, and I don't get involved in the politics of the environment because I have a job that I need to do because I need to understand my situation. I need to increase the reliability of data used in making decisions. So the person doesn't know how many persons are in each subject, each unit, each class, so they can share the people in the room. So if our class had 50 people, then obviously 50 persons could have sit in here comfortable for a class, heat wise. Seating wise, we're going to move more tables right here. And because this room is a limited use room, that only students of a certain maturity level can use room because of the, 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 the nature of the room is an electronic class. The machines can be interfered with by students like grade 7, which can damage the computer. Side. It's a highly practical room. So, here's what it means that there needs to be an increased reliability in how we make decisions. So we can put the grade sevens in that class over there. So we put the grade twelves in the new because they have more material than those over there. So we can make decisions. The other one is to get procedures increase the accuracy in data management and storage. Remember, in everything we do, there are steps and procedure that must be followed. I couldn't just walk in here and get the room to use. I have to speak to a departmental head, to talk to the manager of the school, and the manager to call this department over here, so for us to make a decision and get approval before we can do certain things because of the procedure. I couldn't just walk in and assume something, especially because I'm an outsider. I'm not known by persons in this department. But it means that we want to adhere to step and procedure. We look at having food in the room, it's that step and procedure. It's not to be done. It's a very sensitive lab. In other words, we need to make sure we have the right decision stored properly, managed properly, if we are to make the most effective decision. And that is the way about we are there. Then many organizations, there are policies that governs it. You have a company cell phone. You can browse certain websites on your company cell phone. You have a company laptop, you can not open something on your company laptop. Because your company laptop is for your company's work only. It's likewise if you're in a uniform. You're presenting an institution. So if you're going to go and be a bad in a uniform, then when public sees it, yes. So then be a fast start and have this and all that. Because Persons give them that impression that people who come from class behave a certain way. But it's not true. It's isolated cases. Therefore, we must protect the integrity of the organization by the very way in which we behave. We have to follow steps and procedures. We have to follow policy. Coming to school on time is a policy. 
Who did have some surgery or did you have some surgery? Before. If you are late at school too often, then it triggers a procedure for you to be spoken to. But if the same for your parents, they keep on happening. But they put you on probation. When the come back six, when, when results come back next year, you want to go to upper six. And no, no, no. You can't go up upper six because you come to school late too often for the year. Goodbye. Go find somewhere else. Because late arrival to school, consistent late arrival to school affects performance. You can miss things in a class. In my case, I can come to my class the same way and still learn. Because if there's one person before me, the lesson for the day will be taught. If you have to leave to go to your physics class, or your MOB class, or whatever you want to do, at the end of the day, I'll be here up to when my session ends. Because people need to understand you have a life to live, I have a life to live. I record my class, if you're not here, you listen to the recording, the homework is there, the material is there, you read it, do it, do your work, come back, carry to me, say, sir, here's my work, and a story gets a great, and we move on, and we're all happy. But I don't run down people to get anything done. It's not my job. I don't get homework on something there. It's one email to Mr. Costa, to the coordinator six form, vice principal, principal, and it's done. Your school intervening that matter, not me. Because that is a procedure. It means that there are benefits we get from information management. And what are these benefits? You have to write some on your own. We improve decision making when we have the right data. If the data is accurate, we can make good decisions. It improves information. We have more information access to today than we had 10 years ago. 10 years ago, you have to go to the library to borrow a book. Today, you can go on the internet and find it online. Or find any content online. So students don't buy IT book for my class. Because it's online. You must get to the book IT online. If you want to go buy a book, you can buy the book. The book costs about Almost nine thousand dollars. Management information system by SAR or by Lona. It's about nine ten thousand dollars. But there are ebooks available, and the ebook sometimes is free. You have to search for them online. But you won't find all the books online. Is that improved the access we have to information and protect against improper use? Now, improper use, as you learn in CXCIT, is when information is being used for a reason other than what you are supposed to provide it to you. So you find the ebook, and you download the ebook, and you print the ebook, bound it and touch it to people. That is improper use of information. The ebook was not available because it's normally not the most good edition. It's like an old edition available like two years before. So if you with the current edition, the tenth might be available online as an ebook, but not the most recent one. So if you print safety, you can see things in about improper use. Safety can sue you for printing and using your syllabus and bowling and selling it. Because all CXC syllabuses are free online. All CXC exam reports are free online. CXC pattern booklet are free online. You go to the CXC store online, you put an account, sign up, get your account, log in, you can download any CXC past paper, except multiple choices, paper tools, other to SPA papers, exam reports, syllabuses, specimen paper, etc. Free of cost. CXC does that in their intervention management because they want students to become more motivated. If you have access to safety reports and particles and syllabus and something there, it don't cost you one print them. You can download them off the internet on your smart device. You know, put them in your laptop. You might want to print a few pages of your syllabus or whatever. When you go to class, you can follow. But safety materials are free. What safety is saying, if more persons are doing well in their subjects, they are more likely to get more of the in the future. When you're doing safety, 
Get the POB accounts, this and that and that. And you got the material online free of cost. There's a paper pass paper set. But people out there sometimes bound them and sell them to you. Which is illegal. The sale of CXC material is illegal. Unless you're buying to an authorized store, for example, Sanchez Bookstore, Kingston Bookshop, where you get the published CXC booklet. In proper use. If they if they find we're doing it, we can sue them for the use of their material because it's a breach of their intellectual property right. If we use wastage, having the right information, the right by the right person at the right time, it reduces wastage. Too often we waste. Is that this paper? The example I use is the label on a bottle of water. The graphic artist designed the label and sent it on Walmart. Somebody is to proofread that label, making sure everything is spelled correctly on the label. And the label meets the design of the organization. The label is now signed off on it. And the company must make 10 million copies of the label. That's a little from the water bottle. Somebody realized that the word is spelled wrong in the label. That's the problem. Because the start production. But the problem is, do we finish those 10,000 years and have already 10 million years and have already? I mean, when they reach the next time, they fix the error. Now, somebody has just lost their time a while ago. Because there's no wastage. Imagine the water is being water and the person has 876 WACR and it's in the plant and labor logo and the error is there 876 WACR and no one saw the error. So the graphic design didn't work already went to the marketing department it is signed off on sent to the printer with the order form Invoice come back from the company is taking 10 million years. Houston have a problem. Somebody has to get tired. Because 876 dollars in CDR can't go on the market. The commercial, the postal, everything else is 876 dollars in CDR. But the label on the bottle is saying WECR. That's a problem. So the company, we have to dump all of those that are very much on this trial because you can't call them up that WECR. That's basic. Now, had somebody had good information management to check, double check, triple check, quadruple check, and everybody would check and go along the line, somebody would have picked up the error. So when there's bad information management, when to get wastage. When it's good, when to have less wastage. It means that when we know the right information, we can make the right decision. And the right Within the right time. Clear your school is not the end of this policy. Having the right information to make the right decision by the right person at the right time. I have the classroom for the classroom. Your school confirms the transition. As a matter of fact, I get to your school and make $10 off. 
Again, again, the Here, which is 15 years time here, who will confirm a schedule. I make three phone calls to tell her to myself. Lawrence call, sir, working a schedule, I'll see you by next time. That was from last week, Tuesday. Cool start already from last week. Nobody called me again. Call the office, the six from lower six start to start from the eight forty. Yes. On the phone, they don't know who I am. I call Mr. Pasta, send an email, they have my schedule, please. Because I have to put your schedule that I give forward conference in my schedule. Friday evening, I get an email from Mr. Costa, my timetable, sir. Here's your timetable, sir. So right now and then, they have the right information. When do I come here? They gave it to the right person, which is a class. The next step in this cycle is to find a classroom that can fit me for the right time. But there was intra-class use of information management. When I come this morning, when I came on Monday, running up and down to find a room. When I come this morning, up and down, and to find a room. They are wasting time. They know I'm coming. They know what I want to record in my class or I'm going to think. It is their problem, not mine. I give homework, they go to them. That is their problem, mine. I love that zero. Simple. Means that they are using this good information management. You didn't get homework yesterday, do tomorrow. I'll give homework from Monday. What I give for homework, go require the internet. It's common sense. I said to you, everything, I give the questions them. You're going to use. I said to you, here are your homework questions. I actually give them to you in the class. Let's see you. Number one, qualify to the question of information management. Or you can put on the internet. No, you get them from type of source and then write one on your own. Use the cycle, find situation, and document what happens in each part of the cycle. Let's see you. What are two benefits that you propose that information management accounts for? What are two dangers of information management? And I give you some work to do. And those were all said in the class. So it means that when I come to the next class, the work I give you on Monday should be done by Thursday. Because we don't have time to wait. Remember that I don't work like the other teachers in this school. Where I come from, I work as a professional. It's a little funky, funky, darling old school now that I'm from the end. In America, you say, my class sleeping. Every day, back in America, you want to sleep, you come out, you sleep outside. I was up until last night, one o'clock. Preparing for this class. You're going to pay for that. So sleeping in my class ahead of the day. You can know no. If I'm teaching you how to sit out for the whole time, then you can get the same rules. I'm going to get the same rules. When you come to my class, you come to our class. You want to sleep, wash your face, come back and feel refreshed. You didn't know work as yet in the class. But you have to receive information from me. Making your own notes, making your own jackings. The recording door must come. I do must record the class. 
I'm doing you a favor to record the class. If you go to your other class in MOB at Enchant, you don't record yourself in MOB at Enchant. So how will you get to know from somebody? The notes make no sense to you right on your own back and what you're supposed to do them. I didn't have a certain piece of thing from you. It doesn't make no sense to you. Right? If you don't have notes off of the board and you feel like in what the situation was being explained, now it's going to make no sense. Person passed my Cape courses easily because they remember situation. I use example to explain something. It's called active learning. I take something in your environment that you can relate to, but apply to learning. That's called active learning. Not that it's far fetched from you. And I think this subject, there's a book in my hand. As a matter of fact, I have two units who group people in this year. I have your group here, I have Santa preparing, and I have Micro University Cape group preparing. Same unit, same material, but the discussion is always different in every class. But the material is standard. The discussion is different. So it means that reduce wasting. But what should happen? I send this one teacher to the office to collect a math book. What does the office say to you? Who wants the math book? Who is the HOD in charge? Come on, this is the HOD. I'm wasting your time. Because you're going to have a good time. But these people make a customer, and I have to get a math book, two markers. When we have the right decision, the right explanation, or we explanation, we can always review previous <coughs> decision made. If every year this year is my job, my team, I start with my client, this is what I'm going to do. Look at the coach here, the coach in the state, the coach in the state, look at the boy. That decision being made. They have to review. No performance in the championship model. That's a fact. Since championship model. As long as somebody is, they can play football well, but they don't understand the game. That makes sense to you? Because football is about reading ahead of what a person can do as your opponent. Football is based on angles. You hit the ball from this area over there, so look at wind speed, velocity, direction, and reflection of a player when you hit the ball. There's communication in football. You have to call the player on the field so they can know where you are. They can hit the ball in your direction. You have to make sure the call, we look at American football, this team has different training teams. They have to run. And they have to call. Red, 33, 34, red! And they call the play. Do you know what the play is? There's the table. I forgot to study the play is them. When you're playing football, you study your opponent at all times. Look at your opponent, eat the fish. You watch the match last week, so you become a player. If you play against Stan Carter, you play against Woolman. If you watch Woolman's match against Stan Carter last week, so you go play Woolman, you have to learn what they did wrong in the match against Stan Carter that make Woolman's win. But you can't watch Woolman's alone. If you watch Stan Carter also, you have to watch all your opponents' matches. 
Because you want to use the freedom to them. That is why in cricket, they bring in what is called the fourth umpire in cricket. Technology. Remember that the umpire is the one who called the play on the pitch. Remember you have two other umpires, assistants on the field watching. So as it's like in football, you have two other, you have a linesman who assists the umpire, an official referee in the game. But only the referee of the game can make the final decision. And when there is doubt, they ask for the replay. And the game stops. Because if the team is questioning that goal, and the goal is a half side goal, and the referee from where he's standing didn't see that the man run cross past the defender, correct me if I'm right. Before the ball, whatever, you know the thing, right? If him don't see that from where I'm standing, but the linesman see it, and the linesman waving at it, and the goal will score, then the goal can't count. Correct me if I'm right. Good, good. Now, the referee said, so the referee said, what well, the linesman will see? And the counsel will start. At the spot and said, Let me about the tape. And sometimes they have either the smartwatch on their hand where the, where the video person can record the play and send it back to the thing, or them call for it to be checked. They might even send the game on to play while they review it in the in the booth. But the game can still play. This is the ball gets out in the center of the field again. Whereas the goal never score, it starts from the goal kick onto the field. But there's no big deal about it. Because it's just a penalty, it's just a, 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 a regularity in the game. But the game has to go on. Everybody do their job in football because to go for it. But 30 years ago, we never had this 30 years ago. Goal line technology wasn't around 30 years ago. I would play football goal technology for so many years. But all of a sudden, it became so important because referees in the past would have called wrong for the opposing team. We have seen a, a kick where the ball licks and makes up pass, drop on the line. But when the goal line always steps in, because more of the ball was over the goal line, it's a goal. It wasn't done on the goal line. So even though the ball dropped here and then bounced this way by pressure, because the ball had 50% or more on the goal side, it's a goal. The technology stepped in. Remember, there are umpires out there watching the, watching the line like this. They can't see it. From where he's standing, he can't see where the ball bumps. But the only thing that comes to check that play a while ago, that's a goal. It can be, it don't must be. And remember, the technology will support the referee making the final decision. In other words, the one who is moving the gun to make the final decision, it gives you competitive advantage. Have you heard this format? It means that you are able to attend a school that you are comfortable with. So, the only way your school can become rated in, in case, in this form, it's based on your performance. If you don't perform very well, then person will not come to your school for six months. Simple. For one, it's the fact you 
attack the brand new school of Upper St. Andrew. Yeah, on Spanish Town Road. While it is in the area, it can be an unstable area to come into sometimes. That's a fact. Schools in Upper St. Andrew, don't want the violence affecting the residents in the farmers. That's a fact. Where the school is immaculate is, there's no violence immediately around the matter. Because of a piece, it's around the road, yes. But it's not affect the matter. Fact. Okay, Calabar is black and slain, we have the road. It don't affect the school immediately. It's a fact. But it means that if you want to get a competitive advantage, when a student, a student who has seven ones from KC wouldn't apply to come to start for six farm. No, seven ones. He got a KC six farm. And if KC not take him, he might try judges, he might try Woolmas, he might try maybe Camper down. But to come to start the seven ones, he will not be his first priority. He will try several hours to come get the start eventually. When you come to start, you have a lot of fitting for that culture. Because KC culture and that culture is two different cultures. If you go to KC and then in up judges, that's a big thing. Right across the road. So right here is a traitor. It's a KC people. They can go to Calabar. The next thing again, you're going to get Calabar to your food. Because you're an enemy. And KC will not even think about going up all those roads. That's a no no. Hell to the no. So there is a kind of school that can accept him that he may become the number in. <clears throat> Truth be told, him play football at the more come and start. But the more pay for KC. <clears throat> come and start. <laughs> Sorry. Same thing between going to Clan Carter 6 Farm or going to Camp Down 6 Farm. In fact, take up the classes. For your school, the last year, I come to the movie, the intro, so you can start to check performance. You can ask. Your school's public records is public knowledge. They don't have to know. Who got grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, grade five. But what is available to him through safety, if one find out from safety, if him want to find out from, from CXC, he can always find out the school's stats. In tape account one, how many persons sat the exam, how many persons were entered. How many grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, grade five, grade six, grade seven? All of that is public knowledge. You can't hide your results. You can't. What you have control over is the student's data. That John Mung is a grade one, Mary gets a grade two, Paul gets a grade three, Mary gets a grade four. Your school can hide that. But the particular result for your school can be is public knowledge. So if your school is doing very well in MO, in shop and econ and those stuff, but not doing well in French and logistics, then when you choose this subject, say, okay, let me choose what the school is doing well in. Because you know how what is called a competitive advantage compared to other schools. And that is based on there is trustworthiness in stakeholders. Imagine if anybody could read CXC grading system. Would people trust CXC results? No. Why?
management, there is an increase in the trustworthiness to organization. Now, the version of people management are there. If you have wrong data, you make wrong decisions. Like, for example, you go to doctor. Your doctor tells you that you have cancer. You go to He never knew. So legally, the appearance that the doctor, because on the medical form, it has declared to the doctor that you are allergic to it. You can get an extra people. So that's why, for example, when you go to some medical procedures, and not given the correct reading, then therefore, you're going to have incorrect data to make a decision. So that when what is ultrasound, you must have ultrasound for a deliver of the pregnancy. Let them take a book. They know why. Don't know why? The unmedical cause. Remember the baby is in the womb now. And the baby keeps on turning. The baby does move in the womb. Remember the baby is really good enough. It's like any one baby can have a twin. Parents put their baby in water so they can have a twin. From very early age, they can twin. They can 
daily in the ambient of flowing inside the human. But then who wants to talk about a man who was pregnant or a man who was pregnant? And you see the man who was pregnant from me. You see the apple is still. The apple is moving. The baby is moving and the umbilical cord wrap around their neck. The bone kill them inside the womb. So when mother is delivering the baby, and they don't know the doctor that umbilical cord is around the child's neck. Remember the baby you now comes out at first. Because by the time it's pregnant delivery, the baby automatically head turned down for delivery to the vagina. If the baby is not head down and then keep the baby for it to move and stop moving, they have to cut and go in and do a C-section to take the baby out. Because you can't come out foot first. Remember the bones them are soft. The bones don't finish from yet. The one who did come to the vagina and the vagina is this small and the baby can come from the vagina. No matter the vagina muscles can stretch but then it can contract after work. After delivery, there's no blue suit to make it right now. It's that it's just a body thing, you know. So the baby, how does umbilical cord around the neck? The doctors don't know unless an ultrasound is done. Before delivery, the woman does a STD test: a syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes. And on HIV test. From early in the pregnancy, they do test early in the pregnancy. You are told by the doctor to go and get the STD test done or the HIV test done. If you are found to have HIV, the baby don't want to contact HIV. Because you can start putting an antiretroviral drug right away. So the baby don't want to want HIV. It's possible. But if you have gonorrhea, syphilis, herpes, and the baby is passed the vagina, in the vagina, then 9 out of 10 chances the baby will become blind. You mean that? Then? The matter of syphilis and the herpes and the gonorrhea is normally in the stomach of the in the vagina. It's on a way to moisten your room. But then the problem is that all of you have the HIV. It's the same as herpes, whatever. Once you have gonorrhea, syphilis, herpes, similar, or any of those HIV, you are not to have natural birth. Because when they is born, that bacteria or the germs get into your eyes, and it can cause blindness, it can cause deafness. And it can cause birth defects. You know that, right? Yeah. So, what they did, you want to have children in the system of At the six months of the pregnancy, you know, I mean, next blood test. Because it's not the test. But it is somewhere in the system of the system. Don't ask me why. Yeah. But no one is a good record for the baby. No one is pregnant. Have you said it's really pregnant? You have to go to the baby. Doctor, doctor advise you what to answer the when and how. Because it can be dangerous to the unborn child. Remember, the baby is not a child, it's not a baby. Remember that? You can't be able to have a baby because you can't be able to be the person that can cut you and go to the baby. It is much easier. And let's go to you. You take the baby out, or many times you don't know, you're making a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit. And you come up blind or anything. Because if we don't have the correct data, we can't make the correct decision. 
Now sometimes we get things in the woman. No. Birth to sex can be can be kept from very early pregnancy. From the fourth month of pregnancy, it gets to the birth to sex. The child is inbound with no ears. But the ears are not developing. The child is born with a sexual arm. And those things come from mutation. Smoking, alcohol, several things can cause birth defects in babies. Radiation, radioactivity, chemicals in your baby's skin to meet with. Several things can cause deformity in a unborn child. Remember, at up to three months, the baby is still shaking from the injury. But when it gets to four months, it must have four features now. Ears, the nose, the mouth, the folds and arms, the entire of the baby has to be coming in a few months. After three months, it is not enough to be coming out. When it gets to four months, it is not enough to be coming out. I have to go hand in the baby, you have to see no foot, you have to see that extra arm. The baby has two hard beats. It could be a feet. But the hospital will say that on the top of the center, they have seen the deformity in the baby. And the human parents of John are born. If the child is not born with disability, are born from early pregnancy, they are forced to abort it. Because what kind of life will the child live in this world with such deformity that it will and you know people went to pray hard to tell us. It is a decision. But you have to have proper data. Sometimes you can put a little bit early, put the data data, and do things to correct the problem. At six months, the child can be at six months. Not before six months, really. Not before six months. Before six months, it's not really because the heart goes to the developer yet and the lungs will develop as yet fully before six months. Remember that. So if you don't have the right data, then you can't make the right decision. That's why women are asked to go to the doctor every month while they're pregnant to get checked up by the doctor. Am I correct? Because it is a Procedure that they advise you to follow. Go do your blood test, go to this, go to that. I bet you know they have the HIV, get the drug, so that the baby don't become born with the HIV. And if you are born, born, maybe you can't breastfeed the child if you have the HIV. The mother can have the HIV, but the baby don't want to. If you do anti-retroviral drug for early pregnancy, you can stop on the baby. Making that decision. It was a big part to unauthorized persons. I couldn't share your individual results to people publicly. I couldn't. Without your permission. I couldn't. Because I'm with all my control. Is that when something like that and the media comes here? No teacher can speak to the media. Absolutely none. So get the guy can't talk to the media. By the Ministry of Education standard policy, only person able to talk to the media is the principal or the school chairman. The principal must the board chairman first or the first board chairman about the board of the What happened? What occurred? Blah, blah, blah. Quick as possible before the school makes a comment on the matter of the public again. The school cannot give out information. And sometimes you students are the ones who do the wrong thing and bring negativity to your school. 
Five broke out in one class. Cheer full. And then you send a video from my WhatsApp and end up on TV or, or, or TVJ. This is dangerous. Because what we're going to say in the media, look at how they are barbaric. Him snuck the man in his head and spear. I want him to go to the man in his head. And that's the image I want to put out here at the school in the public domain. Remember? Think before you click. Remember, you're going to cause harm to people. The boy's family. But it's cool. Look at the woman in the video. I don't know what I'm saying. The top part of the body starts with them. I run here, try to explain them. It's the flour and the sugar off of the truck. I don't have to give help to people who are begging for help. Remember that human life. You could also save the person's life if you are more human. More human. Remember, you know, the life you can be your own. What is happening to you? Remember, the Bible tells you, do unto others as you have them do unto you. Remember, it might not be you, you, you. But it could be a mother or your father one in an accident and people are children and dying on the ground. And sending those photographs and videos, and what you have seen those videos on WhatsApp, all of them look very disgusting. Is that pedophilia? Some big grown man has a three year old little girl, perform an oral sex on them and a video in it, and it come out on social media. That's sick. Very, very sick. If I was a judge, they lock you up in a prison and then eat a glass of water for this person. They can't hang him. The law says they can't hang him. They make a law, they can't see him. And don't just sit down and solve the problem. Person that didn't need help. But they walk prison and give him counseling and everything to try and help him. Or can't give people. The law says. The law they can't kill. In the US, only some states can use the penalty. They can't kill them until X number of years. They think they have to appeal. And it's all all sorts of appeal in the first time. The last person I think was in 1996 or 94. The last time. Who kill him? Who kill him? Remember, no. court rule, you are sentenced to death in the US, in a state. Some, some states have electric chairs, some have a gas chamber, some have the electric inventor. In countries like Russia, in all Russia, in Slovenia, in Kyrgyzstan, it is the assigned squad in their constitution. But the maker, human rights, so we can't hang them. It's inhumane to hang somebody. But when one man raped one six year old girl, he her, one big old girl, a two year old man, raped one six year old girl. Her, and then kill her afterwards, light her body, and he not do that death penalty. And he to go to prison and get three square meals per day, light her water. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to come back and kill 
it's because they are repeated the offenders. Remember that some some cases in law, you know, maximum you can be sentenced to like rape. Sometimes rape is only like ten years. Yeah, and you commit the rape when you were eighteen. You rape the fourteen year old girl after this, this incest or whatever it is. They come out at twenty eight year old. They come at the same time again and get ten more years. So the second time you come in the court, you come to the judge. This time you are here twenty. But the last year can't be that. The punishment must be defined according to the law. And we have to respect the law of the country. Because sometimes, sometimes, the 18 year old, the 16 year old, the 14 year old, the 16 year old, In get ten years to prison. In Kamu, in learning lessons, and if you come out regular society, and what the child again? Prison can be a little bit some people, but some people can't be helped. No, just use the, just use the upper upper hand tree. See that what it calls us. The government court just use it. Be very serious about young people who commit crime. She don't like them coming there. Rape, stealing. No matter to see if 21 in the Aki or for the Governor General's land, she gave him 21 days in prison to see 21 Aki. One Aki per day. And it's in the law. It had her discretion. In the three months in prison, it had the discretion. Yeah. What is 21 take the Aki? Your teeth fit off some of the land. The last you must get three months in prison. A simple last thing. Yeah. That becomes manslaughter. That becomes manslaughter. That's rape, manslaughter. You become premeditated murder. You have planned the murder. And you become um, grievous against bodily harm or something like that. That's the same thing. But in the other part of it, you become 16 years in prison. You can't get 16 years. The same thing is going on currently. So the work of the state is going to fight for you. You're not going to be able to take it. Were you there? Were you there? Were you there? Those did the prosecution present the evidence that he was a part of what happened to the man. Did you hear the evidence? Did you hear all of the evidence against him? Did you hear the entire the Jamaica? We only hear a part of the story in the book of the Remember, I know. Parcel got caught by his own story, by his own abolition of admittance. It was his own, his GPS, his voice. Remember the phone registered to him. The voice sample was him. Remember that when you can advise to somebody, you remember that you were listening off the phone. In the voice message, you were listening off the phone. When I put on the phone, I was behind. But what did you do that you realize and you realize and you realize? Anything you send to your phone is stored in the next word. So all those conversations, the pattern, the GPS location, what the visa means, all of those things were going to be coming from themselves. And they gave them two CDs, one sealed, encrypted, and one unencrypted. There are both of them. And the evidence was presented to the jurors, and the jurors signed it. Guilty. Not 
but the jury is of your own here that found you guilty based on the law. There was no inaccurate data to Cartel in prison. If Cartel wasn't there, could his name get caught in the first place? If his phone was not there by GPS, could his name be caught in the first place? My mother always said, if you never go out for it, could mess by you. If he was in New York at the time of, if he was in New York at the time of it, and him tell him, okay, kill him why. Cartel will get like three years in prison for contributory negligence and murder. But the fact that he was there at the time of the event and the evidence before the court, the evidence was to find the body. The law says, the law says, the law says, the law says, all of this is that when you have improper data, improper information, we can lead to proper that now. But we are doing right now. I hope I'm going to go up. If other class go up, go to other class, if you don't come back, do you want to? I'm going to go up. And that is that. So in other words, a while ago, there was propaganda. You were spreading misleading information. You did not know what evidence against Carter is in its totality. You weren't in the court. You never heard the evidence at the court. You were not here to hear the evidence. He was found guilty by his own peers, meaning regular Jamaican person on the jury finding guilty. It's not the judge who found him guilty. Remember, put him on jury. The jury is 12 or 11 different jury. 11 or 10. 11 or 10. 11 or 10. On the jury. And he was found guilty by his peers. Not the judge. In some cases, there's no jury. In some cases, by law, no jury is needed. Like in our court, but lastly, there's no jury. The judge don't want to find the law because those cases don't require too much evidence and defense. And it's, not, no, it's simple. One, two. Did you break into the house, young man? Yes. yes. We're breaking the house. My sentence is just to the window. I'm going to go to the window. I'm going to go to the window. It's one for me to phone up with this. And this is explanation. Here's I get to put my placement. You see, for one, you can't even afford it. But the fact is that sometimes we don't have the right information. Yeah. We spread propaganda. And we start rumors which incite panic and cause confusion. Because the 40 year old brother was killed in the garden, the truth of the story is not yet told. Right? If they are trust lost in IT system, then we're going to lose income. We're going to lose income. We're going to lose business. We're going to lose credibility. The country is going to start with somebody else, to buy credit for somebody else, at life. Because your system, that's what you want to go in our world. Go tell them to call and say, the voucher is already put. I need the voucher. How is the voucher used? It's in my hand. I just bought it the store a while ago. Then printed the machine and give it to me in my hand. And I was the only person who had the voucher in my hand. And I put it. And when the cashier print the voucher, they fold it and they give it to you. Simple. When the camera is above the head, the camera has the voucher number. When they come out the machine, they fold it like that and give it to you. They always put that and give it to you. And either the camera is going ahead, so that's the cashier's tail. When it comes out of the machine, they all take on the top part and pull it over and it's straight out of the machine. Am I correct? So the camera can't see the voucher number. What am I guess? But if we lose trust in IT systems, that's a problem. 
Imagine the seat belts don't work. Airbags don't deploy in an accident. The door is open and the sensor and the sensor door is open. You are not support machine and the machine is not working properly. You don't order sound and the machine is not even a proper switch out. You can imagine what can happen. Human life can be lost. Lots of trust in IT. With the elevator, you have faith. Say, we're going to an airplane. You have faith where we work. You see, companies like Air Jamaica, when we had Air Jamaica, Air Jamaica one of the safest airlines in the world. Air Jamaica never have accidents. Never. Japan Airlines, Singapore Airlines, those were the top safest airlines in the world with your Jamaica. Your Jamaica only had seven planes, probably 11 sometimes. Their flight can be delayed, but they have never had an accident. Because the engineering crew at Air Jamaica is impeccable. They are highly paid. They are very well skilled. And the pilot, Captain Ty, for example, he wouldn't pull him out on a rumbar to come fly the plane. Once he's sober up with some coffee and then go to go. In go to go. Because Captain Ty. We land the plane on snow and it's time out and it's soon gone with him. Those who know about airplanes and Air Jamaica customs, Jamaican Airlines, Fly Jamaica has it also. When the plane lands on the Panama, what do people order in the plane? They clap. That is our signal of that. Jamaican people do it because it is so much airline. Would have an airways now? American Airlines. Sometimes it depends on who the pilot is. They will tell who the pilot is. Our pilot this evening is. First officer is um, pilot Chris, and first officer John, and second officer Mary. Chris do fly Karen Airlines, know the pilot, and know the first officer by name. We have Chris. Chris is a pilot, who's an Asian American. So when Chris landed the plane on the tarmac and it dropped, it don't bounce, bounce. Most of American airlines can drop on the tarmac and it just drop it. Boom! And it bounces sometimes. But with Caribbean Airways, the Jamaican pilots, the Caribbean pilots, when they land the plane, they gently come down and slow down the plane completely and then sit on the tarmac and run. And halfway in the descent, they cut the engine and apply the brakes. On the plane. You know, they are boom when they land the plane. American Airlines do, do it sometimes. They have a good control of the landing. Because the way our airport is a difficult airport to land. You know, they are. Same way the JFK in New York. Jamaican Airlines is very well known for their security in the wind. So if you know what you are you will have to put it in the plane. When you land, you're going to tap on here. So you're looking at the head around me. But your judgment to the drum is off completely. The moment it slows on Tarama, you can't land things that slow on Tarama so easy. It's sliding because the eyes start turning. So we must therefore look at the IT systems in place. 
You meet us then to check the equipment, the machinery, to check the equipment, the human capability of their group and security team to the sign up on the plane before they have on the plane. Because they are trust in the IT system that it will work. And if he goes up to the plane and it feels funny, he might turn back and bring it back to the ground. He might not fly. Go to New York. Because when you are in mid-air and something stops working in mid-air, you are in danger to land that thing somewhere else because you can't go to Cuba. And remember, you have 90 miles to get to Cuba. And when you go into America, the nearest stop and go is Nani. Remember, there's no other island between here and Cuba and Cuba and Miami. Imagine when you are flying from New York, Tokyo, which is 14 hours, and you're over water for at least nine hours. Look here, one thing for water. Look here, one thing for water, Papa. There is an emergency procedure, emergency landing. When, yeah, but there is emergency procedure. So when the map land the plane on the water, that is going to break. When it gets from the water, you know, water is nice. Water. Okay, the water When it breaks, water is not going to be So the plane, when it gets in the water, it is going to break. So let's make sure we know where I do. You know that when planes are being flown, the final have been several hundred kilometers of cross landing. They know exactly what to do to minimize the effect. But based on their IT system, they access the simulator and find out what the best thing to do. Because the engine part of the plane is 30,000. That's even small. I'm going to play the episode with you. You are at 1,500. In the air. You're whipping in the air. Above the clouds there. Our engine breaks in fire. Remember, see, you can just do a steel down on the top. And come down. Because that will scale the plane to the back of the decompression. So the way the plane goes, you can shut off the engine, lock off the gas in that area of that wing, and try and fly more than one side, and one side, and one side, and one side, and create the pad with the outer one, and the inner one gone. Because the inner one gone, you know, problem. Because the gas line runs around it. It's a bottle of water, oxygen, so on, air, and everything like that. And they set a fire and bring the plane down to the plane. And try and find your nearest place for land. And if water is nearer than land, land is in the water and take a chance. If we can land in the water, and sometimes. Yes, pump in the fuel. Because if the best fuel is going to burn more. Now when the wings you know, is when the plane fuel is going towards the wind. And most of the fuel is not the whole fuel. But the fuel goes to the wind. Because the engines are in the wind. You must make decisions. And you must use your IT system. But when we don't have good information, we lose trust in them. Because the readers and the meters, them and the device, will tell him what the situation is. And based on his training, 
he has to assess the situation with the co-pilot and the first officer to make a decision. Remember also, one of the flight attendants has flight experience. Flight attendants are sometimes trained how to handle the gear. In these days, a pilot gets shot by something, the first officer gets shot by him. The panel becomes the person from one person and the plane. When you have commercial aircraft, you need at least two persons to land a commercial aircraft. There's always a pilot, a co pilot, and a first officer in the cockpit. Remember, the cockpit is not from the inside, not the outside. You can imagine. If one of the pilots had been compromised and terrorist, have a gun in the cockpit and shoot, but the cockpit is so small. So, therefore, one the co pilot or the, um, the first officer has to be in on it with him. Because you can't shoot a cockpit in a small area in a one plane. The cockpit is very small. That is why with commercial airlines, the security check will come as high as the most time. In a very difficult procedure. And they check your company, your cell phone, if you are compromised, you have to go check on it very often because it can become compromised. How the gun is passed through the scanner in the first to get to the cockpit. The gun must have been brought through somewhere else onto the plane. By one of the engineers them who went to the cockpit. Somebody brought the gun on board. You know, I come to the pilot to go through the scanner. And everybody else. You don't know where it is from the scanner. That means somebody an engineer was going to get the gun somewhere from the gun from. Somewhere somehow. It came on to one gas or something. And it kept on the plane for the pilot. There must be trust in the ice system as people are. Something wrong with us. Remember the plane, the, the system stopped working. Life. When you're going on a car and the brake press, you press it back and stop. When the brake is not working, when you press the brake in the high school for years, and the brake is on the plane and not, there will be one design in the maximum mechanism. Because the brake is on the plane. The brake light came on when it was going. The brake field comes down. They ignore it. That's why every year a car must go in for fitness check every year by law. And some person is bandoo and pay money and give them bandoo and put it in life and say, I can remember my wife and them. I had to go for fitness. But the car is an up to date. They can pay for money before. Do the fitness and we're going to tell them. The car is on the it. The women are not aware. Everything now working on the vehicle, the brake now work good, the light them now work, and yeah, drive the car. Loss of income is clear when there's not good IT system like the DSL. Loss of privacy. Loss of privacy. You see many times people have these things. What about the Western Union? You can't bring this to the Western Union. Am I correct? But when you're in there on the phone, you record the people that they put the money a while ago and they put the money in and wait and hide the money and the video is sent to the first and the outside with none who come out. And the Brafta J, I don't know exactly where the money is, pick up the money. When you go to Western Union, and the money will be translated to you. No cell phone, no texting, no not all. You realize it's not supposed to say no, no cell phone, what's the cell phone? Privacy. Be clear thing. Because if you're in Western your life and you watch your collect money, and you have no cell phone being used. That's if you go to the partners, you can get away easily. But if you're in the line and you see that the person, you're not sure, come out a while ago. You're not sure. 
Good morning, I'm with you. Let's go. 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 You can go into the ATM and push in and come in behind you with a gun to you and to draw the money to me. The camera is there. Have you ever heard anybody get up in our ATM here? No. Because I'm not saying there are three cameras in the ATM. You can two of them. One is in the machine directly. One is above your head and there's one on the outside. You don't have first an ATM. You're an idiot. And one of the machine that can juggle. When you put down the camera on the machine, the machine becomes deactivated automatically after five seconds. You can't block the camera. When you go into Bill Express and those places, him um, and the money remittance, you can't have a hoodie, you can't have no hat, you can't have no glass. You have to remove all these things from you. From you. If you are a Muslim, as women, no matter Muslim have to cover themselves because of their religion. But you have to register that you are a Muslim faith with Bill Express and all of them. So they have a copy of your picture. So they have it in the system. So they know so you are out there to make collect money as a Muslim. So a Muslim woman, not men, women of Muslim have to cover. And when they have to the identification, you have to remove the veil for airport purposes. You have to remove the veil. But only in certain situations are they allowed to remove the veil. Muslim women. So that is a whole idea of privacy. You see, many times in the IT system, we end up losing privacy because of bad information management. There's exposure of the organization, of the procedure and organization. It's not They do not need to be that reason why. They don't. You don't get the job. They do not have to tell you why you didn't get the job. Because that is the procedure of the organization. You don't have it. Do you get back your CXC paper with the grill on it from CXC? Do you? Say that a great one. Do you know? Can you prove that you're a grade one instead of being grade one? You have straight A, you must straight A. That is why CXC says what is called a ranking list for every school, for every subject. When you have a prize given, they know who was the top person by the CXC grading system. A year of school. Then they have regional ranking. But them can't say you get 98.5 and you get 98.2. The exact grade is not public to you. You only know the general grade 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Ungraded, absent. Because if you don't take what is that is then you can actually outsmart the exam. It's like SAT. When the SAT will score 1,210, 1,400. But you don't know what person got correct or wrong. But they on the other side know. We have seen cases in CXC where most of the given the wrong answer was marked by the computer. But we found out after the grade was published. Or, they marked a two question, and the answer again, they marked several two with the same answer around. But when they're reviewing the paper, rare the error, and they add some more marks to your paper. That is why your preliminary results can change by the time that they have come out. I have seen grade two change to grade one. Online results. 
because the great review was done. Maybe I'm going to pick up on the table. Remember, the rush to the deadline. The film results must come out. Normally, the margin of error is at 0.002. Very, very low. When the error is fixed up, the final error, you didn't get the six marks, question two, where they do I get correct. The mark is done the paper, but the score is not in the box. So it's in the other properly. Remember, I'm going to put the paper down on my online. The paper that I scanned, put it on software, to the mark the question, and put the correct stick and the X amount of things on the paper, but to put the number in the, on the side of the screen. And maybe the person put a nine, or put a six, instead of a nine. Or put a five, instead of a six. And that two or three mark, can go a grade three to a grade two. But that can lead to the exposure of the organization. See, if you don't explain to your own error. What they do internally is put a policy in place and reach at their system that's not supposed to happen again. Overmark don't come very often. It's a rare, rare, like point zero 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 one. If it happens, yes, it does. No. Remember the preliminary results, the preliminary results. The official result is the final certificate. Because by three months, we're going to all these decisions, everything is done properly. They can make an error. But do they make error very often? No. It happens in some very minor cases. It doesn't happen. Sometimes you are the one who caused the error. They might say, sir, who can I cause the error in CXC? No. This is stage one. This is stage two. This is stage three. This is question one. Question one. Done right here, so full stop. What are the tools that is instructed in the CXC book about every person in your class? Start on a new page. The top of the booklet tells you in the writing booklet, when you get the black booklet, it tells you if question one, done here, so. You in your classroom test would start question two right here, so and start writing. That's true. Yeah. I hope it was it. CXC booklet tells you do not start question two on the same page as question one. Turn the page, and this is now page two. You start question two here, so and question two on this page. And question two done right here, so before you start question three here, you go to a new page and start question three. It's a booklet. The black one you right here. So when you put question two right here, so and it's a part of two A, two B right here, so. When they scan this page, they will scan this far. The question one, the question two, the mark. And they scan this page, the question two. And they will scan this, look back. They will scan this far. So this one was not marked in the first page. Still three marks are all along. Because of your own carelessness. That's the procedure. That is why CXC now changed their booklets now for online scanning. The new booklets, the full time booklet, you get a question paper and a blank book to write in in CXC normally. Remember that? 
the rural pay for them, bland pay for coffee and everything. But since exam is class, it's time to pay for what a computer. And it's just market on the computer. What they know is to give you a booklet, an exam booklet that has space in it, space to write in the booklet with the exam question. Am I correct? So when they scan the pages, then they scan it. So when they scan question one, question is there, answer is there. Question two, question is there, answer is there. They have two A, two B, two C. There is space for everyone to the right thing. And that's not the problem. No, that's not the problem. I see it in the procedure. So if you want to go to the back page, we have the calendar right to the last page. And don't tell them what the bottom of it is. See page 13. There's all the text of page 13. I'm going to take a quick question on our top and copyright the answer here. So the whole idea is that we understand that there are some dangers in information management. So having all this, all of that, you have to know about the IT stuff then now. If you learn from CXC, what's that feel with CXC? What's that feel? What are we talking about in CXC now? We mentioned fields. We are talking about what software. What software we are talking about? What software we are talking about? Which software has the word fields inside of it? Can you hear my software phone? Talking about the software? A database. Okay. And I'm going to take the ID for the ID phone. So we can't talk about it. So talk about in databases, we talk about what's a field. What do you recall? Anybody? Want me to have what? No. Talking about a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet and a database are similar. They're not the same. What's the field? The one the safety IT does say that June gone to the exam. No one has got grade two and grade one and six. Who in your one grade one in the IT? Grade two in the IT. Great tree in the IT. Who do the IT yet? All right, good. So we have got the IT class already from grade seven to grade nine of IT class. What's the field? What can I tell you? Nobody now right now to my class. Mr. Bookstone, you can play game with the class. I won't call to a word. I know where your mother works. Miss the Amanda works sometimes. No, I don't want to say that I work that. I work hard over here. I'm not going to go back to anybody. I'm not going to go back to anybody. I'm not going to go back to anybody. What's the field? The field is a unit of data stored in a database. Each column of data in a database is called a field. A unit of data stored in a database. A field is a unit of data stored in a database. A field is called a attribute of the database. The name a stored in a database. The column of data is the base then. And I feel this called attribute. So like first name, last name, age, date of birth, gender, street address, town, country, 
That is the field. Also called what? Attribute. Did you remember when you were doing database? After you gave a field a field name, what must you do next? After you get a field a name, what do you do next to the database in the field? You specify what type of data you are storing. You call active learning. You must take part in the learning to learn that thing. I'm not going to take it. I can't get it. The types of data must be considered. The type of data is the format in which data is being stored. Types of data is the format in which data is stored. The format, like what? For six and two is what? Number, left hand side, three bar. That is text. So give me two of about text field. First field, address. Formula can be text. The type of data that is being stored. Now we have one number. Store data as a numerical value like what? Weight, age. Number of children. That is numeric. What is the pressure? What is the weight? What is the wind speed? What is the mile of your tablet? Those are all numerical values for other on earth. Now, currency will do with what now? Monetary data. Like school fees, exchange rate, admittance fee, sub fee, money. This is money. What other types of do we have? Um, we have date and time. Arrival date, the first date. Arrival time, the first time. Time of delivery. Time. You have auto number. If you have sequence number, hmm? like here you see the bus ticket. Yeah. On the bus, every time you get a ticket, it's the next sequence number you get. So if you have 603, next one is 604, 605, 606. Remember, auto number will be the next number in the sequence. Normally, you put my one. Auto number. We have multiple data. This is what? Yes or no? True or false? On or off? Logical. It's one or the other. We can't move. Like your task? Yes or no? You can have both task and field. One or the other. We're going to get 68. We're going to get. 79.9999. The fast mark is 80. You know, reach 80. Yes. They have types of data. They have more than just those. So you are going to find out what are three more types of data in data base. Data number, currency, data time, logical, currency. Auto number. There are about 15 of them. You are going to find out three more types of data and database at the Homer. And don't do the Homer. Go to them. Go to them. When I'm giving you a test, I collect the books them. And while I'm going to test them, I'm marking the books them. Go to the Homer then. 
Let's just download this one plugin for more. So you're going to find those three other types of data in database and define them and give two examples. Mm -hmm. And you give two more examples. The two examples of them. What's the record? What's the record? The yeah, but in the field, but what? Papa, Papa, a record is a row of information stored in a database. The row is only about one person or thing. A record is a row of information stored in a database about a person or thing. So, if, for example, my name and ID is 101, Andrew, Samuel, age 21, date of birth, the 14th of the 6th. Oh, I'm 18 then. 2000, gender, male. This is a what? A record. A record is a row of information about an item or a thing. So therefore, I want some field name about this. A member ID, member first name, member last name, have age, member COB, gender. I have to have the color reading them, the raw information, you want to need. So a record is a raw information about an item, a person, or a thing. Then that is our record for some people that put a thing. Monitor. The value monitor, the serial number, manufacturer date, location of the monitor, number at the end of the room, that is a field. So as it says in the exam, construct a database table for a for a pet store and identify three useful records and get the idea, right? The are also called tuple. T U P L E. A record is called a tuple. What's a table? Pupil. Pupil. What's a table? Anybody? A table is an organized collection of related what? Records. So if this is the member table, I have all the table members. In this table, in the member table, the member table, all the members so that their name, birth, and in the member table. We call it a skills table. So a table, a table is a organized collection of related records stored in a tabular format. An organized collection of related records stored in a tabular manner. Work with me now. In the skills table, I want to record what skills a member has. So I put any name in this table again. What I put in this table? Hmm? Member ID, member skills. One, member skill two, for example. So I put one, zero, one, you have skill in computer, and you have skill in football. One, zero, two, this person has skill in engineering, 
and this person has skill in DKIM. So this now becomes two separate database tables. One is member, one is skill. The skill table will store what skill the members have. But what kind of database, what do these two tables have in common? What do these two tables have in common? The member ID. When you get a database in a class, what do you do with the common thing between two tables? The former what? The former what? Our work. Play and check. Are you standing behind the key and the top there? Oh. You've got this field this team and form a relationship. Amen? Okay. What is a what style? A group of related styles. A group of related tables will form a database style. So if this table is dependent on member database, how many tables are in the member database? The member table and the skill table. The multiple related tables will form a database style. Multiple related database tables will form a database style. Multiple related database tables will form a database style. Remember ID, they will form a database style. The tables must be related. If we have SBA, are you typing SBA up? Would you type your account SBA and your POB SBA in the same document? No, two different styles. They put your account SBA in your account style, your work style. And you put POB in the POB style. Are you seeing them separately? Am I correct? You would type POB and approach SB in the same document in Word. Yes? A table in a note is called an entity. In database, we have table as to it. A table is called an entity. All right. So a database size. You are going to do a homework. Database types. You have three types of databases. Hierarchical, relational, and network. And there are more than three. Look at those three for now. You can define it. Give me advantages. Disadvantages. And use. Define advantages, advantages and use of these three. Define advantages, disadvantages and use. Tell me where they are used. Tell me how are they used. The former. You are going to define. Database management system, DDMS. Tell me what is a database management system, DDMS. No, what? The class, I don't know. I must be a work for the next class to come. Stop being an idiot. Define DDMS. DDMS. Database management system. Those are some more. Yep. No, you are going to complete the last slide of the PowerPoint. I'll send an email. When I go home this evening, the online accounts are created. 
So the other persons who don't give me their contact detail, let me have their contact detail so I can create your online account. You can all act as a material online. All of your notes are online already. All of your notes are online already. All right. You are going to complete the other slide in the PowerPoint. You are going to complete. You are going to complete the other slides then. So the slides from four and five are little bit useful. You have to go through all of these. Please look at these things right here. You are going to prepare these for class. What that is to do is data mining. Prepare. What are data mines? What are data without it? You are going to go and finish these slides on your own. You may come to class and discuss with me. Teach me. The as is not going to mess up, I'm going to go and teach you tonight, Professor. You get on your boat, discuss all of these things. Make sense of all of these things. Go through these things. What are these things? What are data mining? Data mines, data warehouse. You have to go to the history of storage device by your own. And the material is there. Yep, you're going to go through history of storage devices. Go to a PowerPoint and come to the class on it. So come now. So let's go. First, we're going to go to the Who Are you alone? So you have this slide to prepare. Teach your class. You all alone, or anybody is fine. So this is your slide. Those who are born between April, May, and June. Raise your hand. Raise your hand, man. April, May, and June. You have this to teach me. History of story devices. Those who are born July and August. July, August, September. What about the man? Stumpy. What about the man? What about the man? You have this. Both of you have to teach me. This job I only have to teach me 10 minutes. July, August, September. You write it down in your book. Those who are born October, November, December. You have this to teach. Farmers of data. So you get a history of storage devices. Your three devices. Him get this one. Him get this one. January to March. You get this. Those who born April, May, June. You get this. You get this. You get this. You get this. You get Two different things. So January to March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So this is January to March. This is April, May, June. June, July, August. September. June, July, August. September. No. Good. And I will teach this part of the lesson. Now I want to show you a video before we end 
of one of the problems that Tim went talk about in his presentation. I have to listen carefully because I speak on the Lord in this class. That's scary, right? Because databases are connected to each other. Is that no idea? When you have time for university, your scary number has to be used. You give birth to a baby, scary number must be used. You have a death record, scary number is being used. You get much money, scary number is being used. You're applying for a visa, TRN number is being used. You plan for a passport, TRN number is being used. You plan for a driver's license, TRN is being used. You plan for a company record, TRN is being used. You plan for a JTC bus card, TRN is being used. No, the TRN is going to The NIDS. We're going to have the NIDS now. National ID. Yes, on the new law, the NIDS. You know what NIDS, right? The National ID is a database system. When you're born, when you're born, you have to have a number which carry up until you're six years old. When you become six years old, your fingerprint must be entered. Your, date, your fingerprint is entered, facial sign is entered, or whatever into the need. When you become 18, you have to fingerprint again. Remember, the needs is done, that's the idea. So, in your own, you may want to talk about the needs, young man, you, needs. National ID system in it. All right. So I will make sure 